Yo, BJ Gador with the Daily BJ, and here are my 10 favorite hamstring exercises to build that posterior thigh. I'm gonna show a mix of basic and premium equipment options. Before I get into that, just some brief functional anatomy. So the hamstrings have two main functions. They are knee flexors, so think any leg curl variation. They're also hip extensors, so any sort of deadlift or particularly hip hinge variations which isolate movement through the hip to really get the hamstrings going. More knee flexion driven movements will get more lower hamstrings. More hinging movements will get more high hamstring and glutes. You can also play around with your toe and foot positioning to target certain aspects of the hamstring. So a closer stance on hinges will get more outer hamstrings. A wider stance on hinges will get more inner hamstrings and then fit foot position on leg curls. If you go more toe out, you get more outer hamstrings, toe in, more inner hamstrings. And they are a fast switch fiber, so they do really well with low to medium reps on the high tension movements that we're gonna show like heavy hinges or glute ham raises, but they're also like any muscle group, you wanna do all rep ranges for best results and max gains, so there's great high rep options too. Movement one is any sort of leg curl variation. So this movement tends to get a bad rep because it's an isolation movement, only moving at the knee, but if you have legging, lower hamstrings, and or want to get full maximum size in those hamstrings, you've got to do the isolation movements too. That's what bodybuilders do. They know what they're doing when it, terms, when it comes to building muscle. So I'm going to show two options here. One is the seated leg curl option. If you have a leg curl machine, that's great. I do not. So I just have a band at home or anywhere option. Just hook into a power rack, tree, pole, any stable support structure, and I can hammer these out for high reps. One of my favorite protocols is 100 reps in as few sets as possible. Or what I like to do sometimes too is I'll pair this up in squats. So I'll do 20 to 30 reps in between sets of squats, which actually helps flood blood to the hamstrings and give the knees more stability at the bottom of the squat. So that's one option. It's a great one. You could also go in terms of the line leg curl. You can do this on a machine or again with band tension. And bands are unique because what it allows you to do is actually get peak tension at peak knee flexion, all right, where you want it the most. And the hamstring is really flexed and fully shortened and contracted. So this one is just a great way to, you know, really go high repetition, good pump and burn, more metabolic stress to really build up those hamstrings and even working in some isometric holds at the end range there. Movement two, kind of the classic stability ball leg curl variation. Now, why is this so good? Because it actually trains both functions of the hamstring simultaneously. You have to maintain hip extension while performing the knee flexion. So you actually get both aspects of the hamstring complete development. If there's only one move to pick, it would be this type of variation. So what I'm gonna do is raise up, hold that position, and then curl in, squeeze, come back out and control. All right, so the hips stay fully extended the whole time as we do this. This is great for even adding some slow tempo, slow eccentric aspects to it, good squeezes, or I can go faster tempo, higher rep. You've got options. You can also do it on one leg to make it much harder with your body weight and build symmetry and strength between sides. I've got a full deep dive on the stability ball leg curl with all progressions. Just check out that video on my YouTube page. All right, so that's movement two. Movement three is my favorite way to access the simultaneously knee, knee flexion, hip extension with the rolling leg curl plus band tension. So instead of just going super high reps on that, I can increase the band tension to make it even harder. So I like to do this with a heavy band for sets of, let's say, four to six repetitions, then more medium light bands for eight to 12 plus reps. So you get really kind of that full spectrum of you know strength and a little more muscle gain stimulus in that medium rep range, and then obviously endurance in the higher rep range. So I'm gonna raise up, crunch the abs, squeeze the glutes, maintain that hip extension, pull through, squeeze. This one will just shock the hamstrings into growth. And if I had to pick one, I guess it would be this because I can make it more progressive with the band tension than just the stability ball leg curl option alone. So I love that one. That's from Soranex, the glute ham roller, and you just attach a band to the roller and then a power rack or any sort of stable support structure. Next one, high bench box chair ottoman. Uh, the higher you go with this on a foot elevated hip thrust, the more hamstring activation. So uh, I just put this uh, Bulgarian split squat stand in the rack. Again, use whatever you have access to. I can do two-legged or one-legged. I'm gonna put my Achilles right on the pad or bench, and I'm gonna push through, squeeze, lower control. Abs stay crunched, ribs and shoulders down, and especially at the top, the higher I get, the more the hamstrings have to flex uh, hard, the more uh, 
the knees have to flex hard to kind of hold that position as you come through. So the feet elevated version works more hamstrings. The shoulders elevated hip thrust works more glutes. And we're after the hamstrings on this. Obviously the single leg option is the most challenging and sometimes I even like to make it kind of a more pumping where I never let the hips rest. I keep constant tension and think mind muscle connection using the hamstring to lift and lower all the way through. So those are great options as well. And body weight is always great for high reps in tempo. I'll sometimes I'll do sets of one to two minutes just straight, just trying to stay in motion, slow up, slow down, and really get that mind-muscle connection going. From there, we've got uh, Bulgarian hip hinges. So, you know I'm a huge fan of Bulgarian split squats. I've had to pick a single lower body movement to really build that, everything out. That's safe, easy on the back and knees. It'd be that. I also like what's called Bulgarian hip hinges. The, the slight difference here is two, in two ways. One, I'm going to put the back toe on the box bench, step, whatever you're using to elevate. It's kind of a kickstand on a bike. And then I'm not squatting, I'm just hinging through the hip. So all that is is a stabilizer. I like to do this, you can obviously go two kettlebells or two dumbbells at a time, but my favorite way is one at a time because you get more stability benefits and also more core hip activation. So what I'll do, and I'll show both arms, the uh, opposite arm holding is going to get more glute outer hamstring emphasis. When you go right in here, you're going to get more inner thigh emphasis. So they're both great. One way I like to do sometimes, I'll do a minute on the left arm, a minute on the right arm, two minutes total of hinging. Great for time under tension and building those glutes and hams. So flat back, I'll put the small, my hand in the small of my lower back to make sure I maintain a slight arc as I come through. I lower so I'm in a tabletop position, pull right through the hips. So almost all my weight, 80 to 90% of the weight's in that front leg. My back is flat and I'm just going from tabletop to a stand. So I really felt that outer glute thigh stress there. And then I'm going more inner and I'm really now working more of that aspect of it. More inner thigh stabilization here as we rock through. But again, fully developing the glute ham, great core shoulder movement. And then hamstrings, like I said, are very fast twitch dominant. Sometimes 65% or more fast twitch depending on the individual, which means they really respond well to fast explosive movements and also um, lower to medium reps. But again, you wanna do all ranges, you wanna do heavy swings, and light swings as well, because again, get the endurance and the strength benefits, but the uh, swing is just a ballistic hip hinge. So first, you wanna be able to properly hinge at the hips, all right, before you go to the swing pattern. All that is, the weight's about 12 to 18 inches in front of you, tip it on its side. We're in a flat back tabletop position. I just engage the lats and shoulders, kind of wrap them down, crunch the abs, pull through, hips extend through. So I'm going from plank to tabletop. Arms are just dead holding the weight, it's my hips that are driving the movement. Such a great explosive hamstring movement. And you want to go, make sure nice flat back. <sighs> Exhale through the top of that movement. All right, let's go over here now for our next drills. This is a body weight movement, but don't confuse body weight for easy. This is actually my go-to mass and strength builder for the hamstrings. Minimal spinal stress, unlike deadlifts, which can really wear you down and cause injuries. This just is putting as much load and tension into the hamstrings, taking the spine out of the equation, using gymnastics a lot, really meets up the hamstrings. Here's the progression. I'm using a basic glute ham developer. You could also hook your feet into a lat pull-down machine or even a seated calf where there's pads that kind of anchor you down and you do it off the edge. But this is what I have access to right here. So the glute ham raise is gonna be moving only through the hips. So a little more high hamstring glute emphasis. Crunch the abs, bring the ribs and shoulders down. I dig my toes into the plates, drive the heels in, lower and control, pull back through. You wanna be able to do about 15 to 20 reps here before you progress to the more advanced Russian leg curl or Nordic leg curl. You can see how hard the hamstrings are working to complete the movement. Now, what I'm gonna do this way, a couple ways you can access the next one, the Russian leg curl, Nordic leg curl. King of hamstring movement. So, I personally like to do this with a slight hip hinge. Some people say, oh no, you're cheating because you're, you're hinging at the hips. But I actually, and there's other strength coaches that I know like Brett Contreras, Jay Ferrugia, who've mentioned this as well, where they actually feel more hamstring activation by doing this from a slight hip hinge. It also allows you to maintain better spinal mechanics. When a lot of people try to stay totally straight, they end up really hyperextending the low back and hanging on the low back, and you don't get as much hamstring recruitment. So yes, I could go totally straight, squeeze the glutes, rip shoulders down, and go more of an eccentric emphasis where I'm slowly going five to 10 second lowerings, slow, slow, slow. And then I just assist 
with my upper body a little bit coming up. Great for sets of five reps with that slow five to 10 second lowering or slight hinge at the hip. And now I can do more controlled repetition. And this way I really feel the hamstrings, but now I'm moving at both the knee and the hip. So I'm getting both high and low hamstrings working super hard in this movement. And uh, I'll often do that for sets of eight to 12 reps or max reps. You can, over time, gradually lengthen your body position. Next one. Here's a great wide stance option. Like I said, a wider stance on hinges tends to get more inner hamstring. Also good stretch of the adductors. But my favorite way to set up is with a landmine setup. What I'm gonna do is hinge at the hips, go as wide as you can, flat back tabletop, hold it like this, and then you know what's up at the top of that movement. All right? I'm not well endowed until I do this exercise. Hinge at the hips, flat back, head in line with the spine, get a good stretch. We get a great vertical stretch with the landmine load but again, I just like this as a really kind of autocorrects or hinging form, less stress on the back, and just hinge through. If you need a slight toe flare, you can, but if you can try to keep the toe straight ahead and go out as wide as you can, you'll really feel the stretch. And uh, this one's great for sets of 10 to 20 repetitions. If you really have the ability to load it up, you can. And I just added what's called a Warhammer in pure motion. Go to gardenofgains.com to know where to get this and access discounts on all my equipment, by the way, with the coupon code TheDailyBJ. But I just pop it on, and uh, especially because sometimes it's hard to grip or it's too thick for your hands or you run out of space with the plates, adding this on just allows me to get a better gripping option to get more separation from the bar and plates. The next movement, still using the hinge setup, is the single leg hip hinge, but using, again, that landmine option. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna side, uh, get parallel to the landmine unit, hold it like this, left hand loaded, right arm holding, and I'm just going to hinge at the hip, flat back, you can reach that back leg or keep the knee bent and just kind of scoop through. Try to keep your hips and shoulders as square to the ground as you can and just drive through the hip. It's my favorite landmine single leg hip hinge option. So good for balance and stability, bulletproofing the back and the knees, core engagement, but really develops the, the whole glute ham, in particular the glute ham tie-in. All right, so the 10th and final movement uses a dual landmine setup or the Renegade bars from Pure Motion. Again, you can use a barbell if you want. You can use hammer strength equipment, but I really like this option. I find it to be very small learning curve, very easy on the back, great for the shoulder positioning in terms of the neutral grip options like a trap bar, but we also access unique angles we can't access in just pure deadweight vertical based movements. So I can face away, I can face forward, I can do it from a parallel stance, I can do it from a staggered stance, but I can also really load these up, hammer the glutes and hamstrings, the entire posterior chain, backside of the body, and these can be some great heavy loaded movements. So I'm gonna get my feet closer together compared to the uh, wide stance option, the close foot position means arms outside, and you notice how these handles are nice and neutral grip, which means I put my shoulder and spine in a safer position, and I'm gonna get more outer hamstring in this because of the closer stance. So I just hip hinge, come right through. So I'm actually, you can see I'm pulling backwards to that top position, a nice good backward traction movement. So good to kind of change up the stimulus. I can do that also, um, and switch positions and face the unit. And uh, this actually will feel more challenging than at the bottom of the movement. It's more of a vertical base exercise, super big stretch in the glutes and hams coming through. And I can also do it from a stagger to shift about 80% of the weight now through that lead leg, a little more of a unilateral base movement while still maintaining the handle, really heavy loads because I have a good stability and base of support about me. So my 10 favorite hamstring exercise, use any combination of them that you want to turn those hamstrings into man strings. Bye-bye.